coffee club, coffee club. Grind your beans and grab your favorite mug. It's Ali Morgan, George and Gus. It's them boys from coffee club. Boys from coffee club. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Club podcast. Very exciting episode today. We have a returning guest in Mr. Ben Flanagan. Ben, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm stoked to uh, be relevant enough to get a second episode. Very nice. Very such, nice. such good yeah. memories from the first one. <laughs> from oh, our, God. It from was our miserable. Favorite, our favorite training. It was miserable. Raining, freezing cold. It's crazy to think that that's probably over. No, not probably. Definitely two years old now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 it is. Maybe That's January. Crazy. I, could, I couldn't think in my head for some reason. Ollie, was that the? Were you on that episode, or was that when you had the Melrose? Oh, when flow? I was when I was cooked because I drank out of the body. Was that that cup? week? No, I think no, it was. Who was Ollie? Alicia, on that? Ollie was there. Alicia no, was yeah. the week after, and I think I was crook because I drank out of the uh, Warren Maker Mile Cup, and this. It must have sick. been before because the shoe testing was before. Yeah, it was. Oh, before. That's what you were there for, huh? Yeah. Shoe testing. I came That's for right. shoe testing, and then you guys all lit it up like a week later at Melrose. Yeah, Ben had I'm the good option me, of getting out of there. <laughs> you had an escape plan. Can't believe, I can't believe they made you go down there. <laughs> no, I, was, I mean at that time it's like I just signed, so I was like mm. classic giddy about doing doing anything. anything. Yeah, and I'm based in Ann Arbor, so a trip to Orlando sounded good. On but paper, <laughs> yeah, on paper it sounded like it was going to be nice. <laughs> well, we have so much to talk about today. We are going to be previewing the ten, catching up on some of uh, the highlights from NCAA's, and of course some more freaking annoying jingy Josh Kerr news. But before that, we're Josh gonna, Kermit. Yeah, we're going to do all things Ben Flanagan. And to start it off, we do have a very personal Bean shout out. Ben and his father-in-law have gifted us many treats. First off, we have this bag of beans. Do you want to explain where you got these from, Ben? Yeah, this is a coffee obsession, normally called Coffee O. Um, It is from Falmouth, Massachusetts, little town, you know, just in case anyone's never heard, I... I've run that race a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor, the run. mayor of Falmouth yeah. is here. So uh, that's my my wife and her in laws' family. Uh, they're from Falmouth, so they've got a spot right downtown, and then one like maybe I don't know fifty meters from the start line. But the first time I ran Falmouth, I had a triple espresso right to like right before the race. That's usually what I do. And I got off the bus and I was like literally about to piss my pants. The most nice. I've ever had to pee. Really? Yeah, because you take a, it's a point to point course, right? Yeah. So you take a bus. It's really long, about to pee. I, I jump off and I like go straight to the bushes and I drop my triple espresso before taking a sing- single sip. It's gone. But luckily, coffee Devastating. O. Yeah. There was one right by the start line. I grabbed that. Good to go. Amazing. Nice. Good memories. Yeah. And then we also have this big box come in. Do you want to explain what's in here while we rustle through it and see what gifts are in here? I'm not certain. I, I'm <laughs> guessing there'll be some Falmouth memorabilia, which is no way. might be what that is. 50, Falmouth Road Race Mug. 51st running. Yeah. Has yep. that happened? Was last yeah. year 51st? Uh, yeah, 51st would have been last year. Two years ago was the 50th. So they give out mugs every year to the runners. So Scott, my father-in-law, he's got like a cupboard full of like 6,000 mugs. And then he also uh, owns a candy store downtown on Main Street in Falmouth, which, spoiler alert, you might find some of that in there. This is like show and tell. Yeah. This one- There you go. This one's more coffee. Cape Cod coffee. Oh yeah, that's uh, they sponsor the road race. That makes sense why it's called Falmouth Road Race Runners Roast. Yeah, there you go. Amazing. What's the what's this called? Gelfies? Yeah, so that's uh Hannah's maiden name. Well, Hannah's name is actually still Gelfie. She hasn't changed it yet. So uh Is she gonna change it? Yeah. Uh, at least that's what she told me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess at this point who knows? She hasn't changed it yet. Uh, seems like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't make it easy. Oh, no, amazing. particularly for athletes, because like a couple of our teammates, like Sage and Josette, have had like told us like the uh, like particularly when you put competing, you have to like change your name for what athletics and like your bibs and stuff. Yeah. New license, new, new passport. License, yeah, new passport. But I don't think like, that you to run with the different name. I don't think you actually have to change it. I think you can just tell them. Like, oh, because you did the you did the Geordie. I did. I yeah. did make that. Uh, you did make that request. Make that request. Oh, nice. But. Yeah. Not that that's got anything to do with it. (laughs) But I don't think you have to legally, to be able to put like, I think Sage, like, I think she just puts her to click. I don't know. That's like. Honestly, her to click is such a good, like, mix up. It's just. Mash up. Mash up. She made sure she she got in first. Yeah, great collab. That's a great collab. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, sorry. Yeah, what's Josette's maiden name? 
Uh, no, Norris. 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 So Norris Andrews. That's Norris. Not, actually, that's not bad. That's not bad. She races as, as Norris Andrews, doesn't she? I think, I think she, she just races Andrews. As Andrews. I think yeah. just Andrews. She's just oh. Joe's at Andrews now. I know her as Norris Andrews. May I just be making that up? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like you might have made that one. Up. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, well. Well, Ben, and uh, to your family, thank you so much for these great gifts. We're very yeah. excited to enjoy them. Scott's, yeah, a, Scott's a huge fan of the pod. Shout out to Scott. Yeah. Thank oh, you, Scott. his candy well, is going to be demolished after this podcast. Will we be invited to the race one day as a as a podcast? I would say you're probably us. invited right now if you want it. Yeah. Um, when when is it again? September. Race, Unofficially August. speaking on behalf of the Family <laughs> Organization. Uh, it's, uh, it's the third Sunday of August every year. Okay. They do have a mile on the track. Sh- on the track. Okay. True. And then they have the uh, seven miler two days later. It does seem like a very cool race. Mm. The that milers one? are always ready to party too. It's like gong show downtown after the race because it's so late in the season, right? All right, kind of tough timing now with the yeah. uh, with the worlds always being late as well. But I yeah. would love to squeeze that in if we can. Yeah, yeah. It it's it went really well for my career because I didn't ever make teams, so <laughs> I, I could always go to the Falmouth Road Race. But now that I've been making teams, it's a lot harder to. It's a good yeah. backup plan. Yeah, exactly. You got to enjoy. It. You got to experience both sides of it now. You get, the, you get the. I the do remember, I feel like you said that you were like, I hope to not be here next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, it's yeah. a great plan B. It's a good way to, you know, shake off. The I mean, that's how you met your wife, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Amazing. So, Everything happens for a reason. 100%. Exactly. Well, Ben, we have loved having you out here training with us for a few weeks leading into this 10K. And overall, you've had an amazing, amazing start to this year. You've uh, already notched off the Olympic stat in the 5K, but also you're joining us with some very exciting new news today, if you'd like to share it with the with the world. Yeah, 100%. Um, so as of pretty recently, just signed a extension with On. Um, clap sound effect. Yeah. We haven't got that on the thing yet, but everyone clap. <laughs> everyone clap at home. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, super stoked. Uh, it's something that I knew. Um I wanted to do for a while. Like I've always, I've just always had a really good experience with the brand. Uh, so we got on it pretty early and was it, we're able to seal the deal. So um, I'm locked in now until uh, LA 2028. Sheesh. So, yeah. So going to be uh, an old man. Going to be an old man. We'll, we'll and be it's old man by then. hundred <laughs> percent. And it's uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, who knows how things change, but it could be like through the rest of my Career. So, especially as a marathoner, once I do that for four years, I'll probably want to quit the sport anyways. So, <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah, Thanks. congrats, That's, man. That's, That's awesome. very exciting. Yeah, very, very happy to see a good guy, good guys on top, you know? I appreciate that. We, uh, we had a brief mention beforehand that I feel like extensions in other sports are like, is like always like quite a public announcement and like a big deal. I feel like we should. We should start making a bigger deal. And the only one like, that, that's sweet. The only one that was made a big deal was annoyingly Noah Lyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. That's, that's the only one that comes to mind. Yeah. Well, it's and, you, and, you and the one, <laughs> the funny thing is that with a lot of sports, when you look at the extension, they tell you how yeah. much it is. <laughs> and with Noah Lyle, it's like, he signed a breakthrough massive deal, but you can't know what it is. No one knows what it is. So that's kind of like a bit of a downer. But I mean, if no one else has uh, signed an extension yet, this is... Probably the biggest extension contract since Noah Lyles' yeah. <laughs> announcement. Yeah. So true. No, we have the, we have the, yeah. So that, that's on our podcast. First. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, I brought it up to you the day after Noah Lyles' extension. <laughs> I was like, this is going to sound a lot less impressive now as of, as of yesterday, but yeah. But anyways, now it's out there. I'm pumped. Uh, an IG post will, will be coming sometime before or after, probably at the same time as this release, maybe. Wow. If we can really get our, our ducks lined up, but we'll see. Yeah, lovely. We'll we'll start working on that immediately. Yeah, yeah. immediately. <laughs> Try to line up those time, those the scheduling. Uh, but yeah, we do want to just kind of get into how you've been enjoying your time here and all that leading into this 10k race. It, from my my point of view, which is often right next to you, it seems like you've been knocking off some really good training. Yeah, um, it's been very positive. I've had a really good time. Um, it's interesting. Like, first of all, it's been like really easy because of how accommodating the group has been and Dathan because you know I, I didn't really know what to expect but um for those that don't know I talked to Ronnie talked to your guys group and basically just like slid into workouts and I'm staying 45 minutes away so I drive in for workouts do all the easy stuff by myself but um yeah the first workout here I, was that uh the fart lick mm. and that went great I was like dang I'm gonna like crush it here and then like a week later I was, was like I, I can't finish this workout <laughs> so it was like 
the threat. That's the attitude. That's the attitude that comes to bite you in the ass. A hundred percent. So um, it's been a good like progress because um, yeah, I've been able to kind of like make some adjustments because the workouts are hard. Um, obviously, and you guys are all like because you guys have such a good group. You know, guys are ready to fire on every workout day, so that's become pretty obvious. But um, I mean, nothing's been that crazy of a difference. The last two workouts, I've finally been able to do like all of them, which has been a big confidence boost. Um, I'm excited to see the outcome on the other side. Um, but if there's any like main takeaway, the biggest adjustment is like, you guys have a pretty like, for lack of a better term, intense, like cadence, you know, it's like, I'm used to probably a couple more days easy in between sessions, but it's like the, what would it have been? Like the Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday, like two workouts in long run within that span that, that can knock you in your ass a bit. It can. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure you guys have gotten pretty used to it, but for coming here the first time, I was like, damn, like especially if you're going on that Tuesday long run, it's like I, after that, after one week of that, I was like, okay, maybe next week I have to like skip one of these. Cause <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of volume and a lot of work. That's interesting. I didn't really expect you to say that. That That's my biggest takeaway. Cause we are pretty much always two days between everything. Um, Does that mean a, basically a nine day cycle? Like kinda. hard session, two days easy, hard session, two days. Easy. So it's always like, like that's three days. So kind of like two workouts. Yeah. The one thing that we might switch is sometimes we do the second workout in the long run back to back. And mm. then that gives you like long run two days workouts. So then you have like a three day okay. um, break until your next session. So um, yeah, I mean, again, who knows? It could be the altitude as well, but I felt like every other day I was waking up and I was like, oh shit, I got to like get up for this. Like it's another, <laughs> like we got another day, right? So, uh, especially for you, cause you had to drive 45 minutes each way. So you really yeah. had to get off. Right? Yeah. 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 You really had to get off. Yeah. <laughs> and if I would do it all again, I'd probably be a bit closer, but, uh, yeah. lots of podcasts. Um, but it's been good. The drives are pretty. So that helps. Mm -hmm. Um, by the end of six weeks, I'll probably be ready to, yeah. Not get, in the get out of here. A little bit. How about the, um, like obviously, yeah, the the cycle has been different. How about the um, lack of double threshold training? <laughs> I have I have not missed double threshold at all. Really? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's interesting. Like, so the threshold days, I would say we would usually double it up, but our paces aren't quite as intense. Like, because what the other day, what Morgan, we were probably running like four fifty fives for like eight minute reps. Yeah. Um, we'd probably be closer. Well, it depends. Like our morning session is usually quite good, and then the evening session might be a little bit. Um, I don't know less structured. It's kind of just what you have on the day. Um, but we get pretty, I mean, you guys get a lot of volume in on everything. So it's like, I don't really feel like I'm missing out on mm. any threshold in the week. Cause it's like every, every workout day, you're probably walking away with what, like 13 to. I mean, especially big lately yeah. doing 10 K style of training. And then you toss mm. the threshold. Oh, 1500 meter training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guys have a lot of threshold though, like within every workout. So it's like, you're getting like, I know Hobbs, for example, he like kind of treats his threshold as like a, like a checkbox. There's a threshold of threshold. He likes to do whatever. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so many miles a week or something. Exactly. I don't know what the number would be. Probably like 15, let's say 15 miles of threshold a week. So it's like, if you do it off of that way, you don't have to necessarily do it like double in one day. If you do it throughout the week, the way you guys do it, like, like the workout we did the other day, you would probably end up with what, three to four miles of threshold in it. So yeah. you're kind of always doing it, which is this, I don't know. It's like nice to have one day dedicated to it. Sure. Um, the only benefit I find is that like when you go to your VO two day, you can really just like dial in on that. Cause it's like completely separated from the threshold day. We don't separate. We mix together a lot of our workouts. So like, I guess coming from my experience, like with the workouts the past few years, they mostly been like threshold and then something fast or like threshold and some VO two. Like there's never like just threshold, but I don't hate that. There is often just yeah. threshold. Never, 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 never is inaccurate, <laughs> but you're right. I you're okay, right. There so are, there really are, are really now, really now. Sorry. Like when we're you in the meat of the season. More, yeah. yeah. In the meat of the season, rarely now, but maybe earlier on when we're getting back into things, there's a bit more threshold there. Sorry. Yeah. So, you, so you guys would never combined. Oh, we did. I mean, once we shifted to the double threshold, we've, we've gone pretty okay. all in on it. And those days are pretty much like, yeah, we don't mix at all. Um, we might, might do like hills. Sometimes we'll do like, I don't know six by mile in the morning and then in the evening we'll do like 10 by 200 meter hill like okay. but not super intense um but that's more when we're like getting bored or like yeah. I, I literally can't do <laughs> case again so we'll tell ronnie just to give us something different i like that so uh but yeah normally like an example probably the best one we did was like 24 by a quarter in the morning and then like six by a mile at night 
that's mm-hmm. kind of nice because even if it's like threshold, you're still running like 67s. So you actually feel like you're still like moving a bit at sea level. Keep in mind. But um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 good. Everything here, nothing has like shocked me. Nothing's been nuts. Um, the mile repeats the other day were very hard just at altitude. That was a pretty big adjustment. And the VO2 stuff took a lot of getting used to. Like the first week here, we when we did the quarters, trying to finish in 60, I was like, got through 200. I was like, I'm literally going to collapse on the track if I try to finish this rep. So, but that's gotten a lot better over time. Mm. Yeah, you got to, I mean, yeah, you're based at uh, sea level most of the year. So coming up to altitude is definitely changes it up. And quite a few of the workouts that we've been doing lately, I would say, I mean, especially hard for, for like sea level people. Yeah. Just like when it has the shorter recovery or we did... We did this crazy 200 on, 200 off. Wait, yeah. was it 30, 30 40? 30, 40. Yeah. 30, 40, which that would probably to me be like the hardest workout to do at altitude. And Yeah. Anything where so you jog hard. like <laughs> jog 100 or 200 meters at like fast, yeah. 40. What did we say that was? I think it's like 520 pace. Yeah. You had to jog yeah. 100. That was our recovery. Into the, into yeah. a, like a into a massive yeah. Yeah. It was like thirty mile an hour wins that day. <laughs> what, so, that yeah. was when I had to adjust. And after whatever rep four, where like I I cut because you guys did like six straight. I did like four and or seven. I did like four and two. And I was literally hyperventilating when I went by Dathan. And I don't think he meant to, but he actually like I think he like let out a chuckle. Like it like cracked him up because <laughs> he, he was like he was just laughing. Yeah, yeah. But, he, he does love like. Or he loves just seeing people work hard. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, good. This is a hard session. (laughs) Oh, I was hurting. (laughs) And we, I think that is like, we don't have many sessions that aren't just basic like key sessions. I I feel like there's no session that's like super low volume or. Unless you're you're tapering for a race. Yeah, not many easy. Yeah. Not not many easy. Yeah. Every workout is normally like a pretty big one. Yeah. Yeah. I was shocked about how short a lot of the rest is that you guys take. Because, like, everything, I, mm-hmm. I talked to some physiologists before coming up here, and number one rule was, like, double your rest in the first workout <laughs> here. Half to the wrist. <laughs> I, was after the, I was out the window. I was like, well, sorry, buddy. This oh, is what we're doing today. That's funny. That's <laughs> yeah. funny. But it's been really cool to see how you operate and how, especially how much flexibility you have in deciding your own schedule. Like, just being able to come here, like, being coached by Ronnie, being part of Very Nice, but still having the autonomy to – be able to do what you want and um it's been nice to see like you have a really good setup with like uh your airbnb and like the family here and all that is it like that for everyone on your team because uh one question that we had initially i don't know if i ever asked you this i probably did is like why you chose to come here rather than flag stuff with like hobbs for example yeah i get i got asked i get that asked quite a bit um so yeah the the first answer is t- totally like everybody has a lot of flexibility it's really up to the athlete in terms of like how much they i guess like exercise that right like some people like to just stay put um that's pretty uncommon like guys move around a decent bit but it's like ronnie's so flexible and definitely has a bit more of like a um what's the word i'm looking for he cares about things outside of running going well he thinks that helps with your running so he's always asking about your relationships you know how, how things are at home just in that's like a big part of what he thinks like just keeps you he's got in perspective check. yeah and keep in mind a really good example of this is willis throughout his career he traveled with his family everywhere. So it's like every single race he went to, Diamond Leagues, mm-hmm. um, he had a, he had his wife and kid, mm-hmm. maybe two kids. Yeah. Riss later. was the same. Riss yeah. would travel with his fucking dog. Yeah. His pug <laughs> monster. He'd travel with him to most meets domestically. <laughs> so yeah. it does does it does make a lot of sense. Totally. To just overall utility, yeah. And if you're a coach that sees that and sees an athlete excel off of it, then I guess you're mm-hmm. likely to think like, okay, well, there might be something here. So anyways, we're lucky to have that, that privilege. Um, and keep in mind like, very nice isn't like uh like we don't have any strings attached right so it's like we all have our own uh sponsors our own budgets so there's no like there's no actual like structured obligation which i guess is a bit more of like the background of why it works as well um why i chose to come here i mean it was there wasn't like any like clear cut reason it was kind of just a bunch of small reasons um (laughs) our group like the individual stuff is great, but the problem you could imagine is when you have four guys that all do what they want, sometimes it's hard to like mm. get in sync, right? So it's like if Hobbs wants to be in Flagstaff at this time, Mason wants to be in Flagstaff at that time, and I want to be there at another time, um, it gets tough to coordinate. So I, I've, I, it seemed like leading up to the 10, I was going to be on my own schedule. So I kind of just was like, okay, I'm going to just plan this like I'm not going to overlap with anybody because that happens sometimes. Um and that's the case. None of those guys are in flag right now. So even if I was there, I wouldn't have, have any training partners. Um, but uh, I drove out here, uh, which was a 30-hour drive from Cape Cod. <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> I 
20 hours from Ann Arbor, uh, you know, obviously not like a, a necessarily recommended approach for most athletes, but a big part of coming here is I wanted to make sure my wife was here, my dogs as well. Um, and you know, Boulder, Boulder or Colorado Golden, where I am is uh, 10 hours closer than Flagstaff. So it was going to be a 40 hour drive from, from Cape Cod. So it doesn't seem like a lot when you're already going 30, but I didn't really want to add on another 10. And then, uh, yeah, Hannah's not a runner and uh, she's never been to Colorado. Um, it was something I could kind of get her on board with. She was excited about it. And for me, I was like, okay, um, let me reach out to you guys, see if there's an option here. And once that, like, once I got the green light for that, I was like, okay, this is going to be a pretty sick trip. So all those things combined made for a, a pretty easy choice overall. But Hobbs and Morgan and Mason gave me so much shit about it. So oh, really? yeah, it did not come <laughs> with like, I did not, I did not escape with that decision unscathed by any means. <laughs> I believe it. Well, a lot of respect for you to be, being able to find kind of that life balance because that same, sounds really ideal. And, uh, yeah, I've definitely seen it in the way that you turn up the training. I mean, I think you're Canadian, so you're always just, like, happy and stuff, but you turn up with a great positive pre attitude. It's a prerequisite. <laughs> great attitude. You have to, to be crush. happy at all um, times. But heading into this 10K, how are you feeling for that? I feel good. I mean, um, it's probably the best I've felt going into a 10. Um you know, it's like, obviously, the big question is, like, over under 27 minutes, right? The Olympic standard. The 10K is tough because the standard is 27 minutes, and it's because the field size, like, it's just comparatively, like, probably the hardest standard, just because mm. the field so. size Smallest is, field size. what is it, like, 20-something? 20 27 27 right? minus 8 cross-country spots. Yeah. Is that still really a thing? 100%. 8 yeah. spots <laughs> gone from cross-country. Wow. So, there's only, there's only 19? 19 spots. Which, you know what, though? The weird thing is the faster the standard gets, it actually makes getting in off of ranking more feasible. Because it's like, keep in mind when the standard was 27, 28, for example, or... Uh, no one would get in on ranking. No one would yeah. get in off of ranking, right? So now that's 27 flat, there's actually does open it up to like four or five guys getting but in. But even, even if you if you speak about tanking, you speak about ranking, that's just like, it's not like a nightmare, but it's just hard because yeah. there's just not that many 10Ks. Have you run... Right, right, right. Have you run one in the period yet like I, starting was that january 1st 2023 um i think did you run one last yeah year? i ran last year i ran into like a minor setback between my bu 5k and the 10k so i went in still trying to like i don't know it's kind of one of those days where i was like oh worst case scenario i'll still run you know sub 2740 and then what'd like you run 2749 <laughs> <laughs> so it was like worst case scenario i was like oh shit maybe it's, this is gonna be worse than i thought so it was fine i've run 2749 twice now <laughs> um, yeah, so I feel like way beyond that, um, 27, 20 doesn't scare me. 27, 10 scares me a bit and 27 flat scares the shit out of me. So it's <laughs> Going like, on 13, 30 is intimidating. yeah, so <laughs> it's not impossible by any means. And you know, once you have one standard, you like think like, okay, I've got a shot another one, but, um, I'm trying to go in laid back cause I probably wouldn't run the 10 K at the Olympics anyways. So to me, this is almost more of like an, an opportunity to possibly qualify for the world champs in Tokyo um, next year. Is that think about window? That. Is that window open? Yeah, the, I honestly I don't the, even know. For the ten k, <laughs> for the ten k, it probably is. It probably is. Months. It's probably like eighteen months. You know what the crazy thing is? It's wild. I'm usually pretty good about this stuff, so I'm embarrassed to say I don't know for sure. But I'm 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 pretty sure the qualification for Tokyo isn't even out, which is a weird thing to think about running a race where you're within the window, but you don't even know really what you're what trying That's is. kind of like <laughs> those guys that for uh, Eugene, maybe those guys at the end of the season before ran that 1500 yeah. and thought they had the standard because they hit the last standard. And then like a few months later, the standard changed and, yeah. they, and they weren't <laughs> under it anymore. Yeah. That was, that was brutal. <laughs> it, it would be nice if that stuff was out early enough before like the race. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's not, but I guess, do they base it on the year before his ranking or times? I guess I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, the marathon 10 care are tricky because the window is just so big. I actually think it's like my own opinion, like more from a fan as opposed to an athlete. Cause if I hit the standard, I'm going to change my opinion immediately. But, <laughs> um, I think the window is too long. I, I hate seeing like, uh, results from 18 months still count for an upcoming race. I think it's like, I mean, I get it, and it's hard because the 10Ks run so um, rarely. But I don't know. I wish I wish there's a bit of a cleaner way to do it. Yeah. So, I guess while we're on um, standard talk, what is the? Uh, do you, can we talk about the qualification process as a Canadian? Yeah, that's fine. What does that look like? It's uh, it's you got to run nationals. 
Not necessarily. So how it works is, um, so the best way to describe it is the way to guarantee your spot is to run the standard and win the trials. That's the only way to like absolutely guarantee selection. Um, outside that, uh, the other two spots are discretionary and running the trials is not mandatory. So you have to run a national championship um, as a 5K runner or 10K runner. You can run either um, the Ottawa 10K road champs, the 10,000 meter champs, which are on our different date, or you can run the trials. Um, so what happens is sometimes people run one of those early races and then that gives them like, let's say someone like Mo Ahmed, for example, like last year, I know he ran the Ottawa 10K champs, which gave him, you know, he checked that box and then he doesn't necessarily go to trials. And if you're so good that, you know, you know, Canada's not going to not select you, then it's usually not a big deal. Um, so the position I'm in right now is Mo and I are the only guys with the standard in the 5k. Um, and what Canada has shown is they're like sending as big of a team as possible, which is great. So they've made it clear that like, if you're in position, whether it be ranking or standard, they will select you as long as there's not three other Canadians in the mm -hmm. same position, because that's when things get complicated. So last Olympics in Tokyo, there was four guys, maybe five guys in the mix and ended up not being selected. Um, but that wasn't based off a of standard that was based off ranking. Um, and if you have the standard, it's usually like, uh, like seen above ranking seen above is ranking. So I'm sitting in a good position, but, um, I, you know, I, I hope I don't regret saying this because if I, if I change my mind decision, but like, even if, even though I don't need to run the trials, cause I'm going to probably run, uh, one of the national championships before then it kind of still feels like right to go and run it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I've never run the Olympic trials before. And like, the balance is it's like, okay, how much does not running it set me up for my best performance in Paris, assuming I, I get selected, uh, versus like, how much do I feel like I should be there, secure my selection, um, all those things combined. And, you know, who knows? Maybe Justin is healthy in two weeks, run the standard, Kieran Lum runs the standard, and all of a sudden it's like, game on, I got to go to the trials. So mm -hmm. I'm staying on my toes. I, I plan to go to the trials and win. That's the easiest way to secure the bid. Um, and... Yeah, I feel confident that, like, even if two more guys run the standard like that, I'm trying to just get in the mindset that, like, okay, well, I, I'll just have to beat them anyways. Mm. Yeah, it's a good mindset. I think that is a good mindset to have. Yeah, so, yeah I say that here yeah. now, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's taking me a while to Let's get... See what happens. Yeah, well, it's like for so long, Mo and Justin have just been so much better than everybody. And, you know, at their all-time at their all -time best, they still are. You know, we're talking about a 1247 guy and a 1253 guy. Um, but you know, the faster I've gotten in that gap getting smaller, at least feels like, okay, like on the right day, I'm, 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 I'm in the same ballpark as those guys. Um, so yeah, it's really just trying to flip that switch that it's like, okay, I want to now be like the best in Canada, not trying to like, just be one of the guys, you know, speaking about being the best in Canada, what does the Canadian 10 K all time list look like? I imagine you have Mo head and shoulders above, but yeah. then you probably have Simon Byru, Cam Levins. Yeah. So Moe's 2634 is just <laughs> disgusting. Hard to comprehend. Yeah. I get asked uh, every year going to 10, they're like, dude, good luck. Get that Canadian record. I'm like, dude, do you know how fast that is? Like 2630s is just, because they're on like the all-time list too, right? Like I think they're six and seven or something like yeah, that. Yeah, all time. Yeah, ever. All time. Yeah, so. So fast. It'd be nice. I, I would love that to happen. But uh, so it goes Mo. I think Cam's run about, like just over 27, 2704 maybe at Prefontaine when they used to do like a really big 10K there. Um, and then probably probably Simon Beiru. I don't know if he'd be next because I don't know if Simon Beiru has run much faster than 2730. Really? Yeah. I remember, I don't, I have no idea what he ran, but I know in the race where Selinski breaks 27, he's like there hugging him at the end. So I assume he wasn't that far behind him, but who right. knows? Yeah, he broke the Canadian record that day, um, which, you know what? It has, it has to be faster because I watched Cam Levins run 27-27 in college. And I don't think he broke the Canadian record. So Simon Barry must be in the 27-20s. But if you look at the list of like not just individuals at all-time performances, it's like just Mo. Like <laughs> yeah, 15, yeah, like 26-30, 26-50, 26-50, 27 low. It's like... Yeah, I think he broke like 30 when he was in high school. Like, Moe's just been like <laughs> king of 10K his whole career. Yeah, he, because he, 2012, 
when he went to the Olympics, was he still in college? Maybe that was his yeah, last year. Yeah, he was at Wisco. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think he was. I think he was a junior. He's only a junior. junior. Yeah, yeah. Because I took a visit the next year, and he was still in school. Oh wow! So he's like relatively young uh, to be running twenty seven thirty. Yeah, he was young. Um, and he was like twenty. Yeah, twenty seven thirties, twenty seven forty. Um, is that back when the standard was twenty eight minutes? I think so. Yeah. Twenty twelve. I think it was like either twenty seven forty five or twenty eight minutes. I think it was twenty eight, and then. I think Rio, it was 28 as well. Really? I don't think Rio was any faster. <laughs> what a, just one minute faster. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> eight, now, eight yeah. Years. Two Olympics late. Then it was like 27, 28. Well, it's 27, 10, and now 27 flat. Is, yeah. the, is the pace this weekend 13, 30? Like, yeah. Is it, it's right on. Yeah, and the lights, pace lights too. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess Which, this is a good time to preview it a yeah. bit. Yeah. So yeah. the pacing... I th- I don't know who actually like asked for the pace, but you have someone. You, it's it's in a such a stacked field as anyone who's been on Instagram looked at a list will see, and you definitely have people who. So for example, Joe Klecker, like he wants to break twenty seven, and the way he wants to break twenty seven is by going out in thirteen thirty. Yeah, you know. Whereas someone like I don't know if you would or if me were trying to break twenty seven, we'd probably be like, I'd like to go out five or ten seconds slower mm. yeah 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 then. i thought you were gonna say faster and i was like <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and have a big last like 800 or that's something that's what yeah. i would do yeah. I'd, yeah. Go, I'd go out in 13 teens and then just try and hang on you just want to go out <laughs> i was gonna say ollie literally would yeah ollie, ollie, ollie 13 teens would. yeah yeah That'd be your well, ollie, lo- yeah, ollie loves the regression <laughs> i love the regression <laughs> just get out of here but i definitely think <laughs> money in the bank the one thing that's going to be massive for this race is the pacing lights like i think when it comes to any race on the track like, I'm not a huge fan of it in the 15, but in the 10K, I feel like the pacing lot's going to be massive. Yeah, the longer guys. the race, like, the, it's definitely gonna the so, more It's going to be so, so, so beneficial, particularly when you guys go through in 13.30, because you guys are going to go through in 13.30, like, um, unless you take some, like, time to... But even off. if you... If there's, like, 15 or 20 guys trying to do that. Totally. That's what I'm saying. You, you go through maybe 13.35, and you're like, oh, I'm perfect. I'm, like, where I yeah. want to be, and then progress. But so having those lights there, like, knowing that's 27 minutes... That's gonna well, be I just it beneficial. just hopefully lead to more consistent pacing because yeah. often in the 10k when you don't have lights, it's like it'll mm. it'll fluctuate between like two second mm. range, yeah. which like, is like a lot, which feels like yeah. slowing up. Yeah, just having the laps. three just is like yeah. a full you, out sprint, you yeah. know. And yeah, if you throw time. one of those in with like 15 laps to go, like that feels that's, that's gonna that's gonna feel so bad. Yeah, it's gonna feel shit. Yeah. So I was on the phone with Ronnie yesterday, and he asked me how many guys were gonna break 27, and. I didn't know the answer because there's so many good guys in the race, obviously. Mm. But um, it also hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't tell the future, but I like. Ronnie can though. Ronnie can. Ronnie's already got the and list. Ronnie told me. Yeah, Ronnie and then told me. Ronnie, Ronnie told me what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. But I was. My guess is like I feel the best comparison I can make is I'm thinking like similar to BU in sub 13. Because there was five guys that did it, which doesn't sound like a lot when you've got 35 guys on the start line and it's super deep. But five guys breaking 27 in the same race would be a pretty big deal. Historically, that, that'd be American. historically massive. Um, I, th- I agree. I think it'd be like three to five. I, that's I'd my be guess. so happy I, if I was wrong. I, I'd be surprised if it was, I would not be surprised if it's more. Just because like, I, that's what we said in Boston seen, too though. Yeah, but it didn't happen. But I think this is like having the pacing lights, number one, good pacing. And I think where we are situated with in the season, I think we could see more people breaking 27 and surprising themselves, which would be fucking unreal. Like, I'm really excited to see that because I think I am betting on that. But like you said, in Boston, we thought we we're going to see a lot more sub-13s and we didn't. So it could be either or, but I'm very much putting my chips on the side of more people breaking 27 because that's what I want. I want to see, like, a lot of people just lose their shit. Yeah. You know? Well, the one thing that's interesting, too, is it's like Grant's obviously stupid, stupid fit. Mm. And as far as I know, he's on the start list in, in racing. Dumb fit. Dumb fit, yeah. um, but he's. It's also his his American record, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I'm curious. You know, Grand's classic. Like, oh, I'm just gonna start running 60s until the end of the race. Um, I'm curious if he goes that route, or if he's like, I just want to get in and get out of this with the standard and move mm. on with my life. You know, that's what he said at least. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's he said that he just wants to run 2650 something. I think. Yeah. Okay. But, but I predict just yeah him just to be on the pace and then just to like destroy the last 3k. Yeah. I predict Joe. Feeling like, well, I did, wasn't able to go sub-13 in Boston, so I'm just going to do it in the 10K. The last 5K. <laughs> 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 Breaks the American it. record. He's like, yeah, I was felt a bit sick in the Boston 5K, so I wanted to go sub-13 in this 10K, get the opportunity to do it. <laughs> goes out 14 flat just yeah. to make it interesting. Yeah, yeah it goes Would that count flat. as a qualifier? Uh, that's a good Wait, question. There's a, there's a camera there and there's a timer. 
I Does mean, if count? you went out for the first 5K. Yeah, if you did the first yeah. 5K. You'd probably need official split, Mark. I don't know if I can, if this is public knowledge, but apparently they were thinking about doing that for the woman to try and find a pacemaker. Oh, like, wow. To try and get someone to split the 5K standard. Yeah, to as, go for it. As like the pacemaker. Wow. That's, because they're that's struggling really to find a pacemaker. Out, out of the box thinking there. Okay, <laughs> before we get off the pace lights, I pitched an idea to Morgan mm. and I want to make public on the podcast because I think it's a very good idea. Go but for it. You've got 35 guys on the start list. You start half at the other side of the track. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like that idea though too. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> that reminds me of another story. But it's like you telling stories, I'm going to waste a ton of time here. So, okay. People are going to get lapped, most likely. Yeah. So my, my pitch is that if it's easy enough to program, you program like 20 meters ahead of the field, another set of pace lights as a warning for lapped runners that the lead group is coming mm. so that they can move out. Like a red light. Like a red light. It's a good idea. So it's like... Well, they just need like the, they need the Formula blue flag. One flag. Blue flag. You know, in Big Ten, this used to be a real rule that if you got lapped, you have to step off the track. That's like triathlon. I yeah. didn't know that. In triathlon, you get lapped out. And oh, yeah. I think just the bike league. If you get lapped on the bike, you have to stop. So just get off, yeah. <laughs> That's so Sully has a really good story about one of his teammates trying to like get around the security guy trying to take him off the track. He like tried to duke him out. But really? and no offense to anyone, I, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to be one of the guys to get, I don't want to see those red lights if they happen. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I just think it's a cleaner way, like especially when you're chasing a standard. In the women's race too, I think it's a massive field. Um, it'd be mm -hmm. really nice to just like, get people like, you know, and you, you, I think a lot of people do want to move out when they're getting lapped, but, but they, they just don't, don't know what's know happening. When, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely just like, there must be, it, yeah, it's just hard. There like, must be more you can program into the lights. I, I know that so. in the women's race, Let's they're talking about, they're talking about speeding the lights up at some point. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are they doing that for the men? I like, no I don't know, maybe the, the women are on like 15 flat and then the lights are going to like That's speed the worst. up for the, them or something. The best thing about wait, the lights is that they can't kick. Flat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, wait, the women are going 15 flat and then they're going to speed yeah. up the lights after that. Well, I mean, I put, I just picked that number, but... Because what does Alicia run? 30.04 or something like that? 30.03. Yeah. What's she going for? 28 minutes? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Why not? It's the next natural progression. She yeah. should just be in the... Is there a, she should just be in the men's race. In the, is there a men's B race? Yeah, she's just that. She should basically just be in that. Yeah. Up in. It's a great idea though, Ben. Thank yeah, you. I do like that idea. Good. Yeah. Shout out to Sound Running if if you if you like it. Yeah. I'll take I don't know. Uh, they do listen to this podcast regularly. Twenty five so percent of the royalties. They'll, they'll take into that feedback. Yeah. Good to know. So I should take this moment to announce my current situation on the ten K, which is kind of annoying. It's uh if I was a football player right now I'd be i I'd be have the big Q next to my name in um if you play fantasy, I don't know if you guys do that. I do. Question, um, question it's like before you. It's the worst like, thing for a fantasy management yeah. to see when you wake up in the morning. You see like all your top players have the Q next to me. Like there's oh, like fuck. IR, which is like your actual yeah, injury reserve, gone, yeah. and then there's like is there one more in between? There's Q and O. O, o is out. Like you're just out of the okay. game. Yeah. So Q is like questionable, which is my status at the moment because I have picked up a little niggle, as we like to call them, in my pelvis area, and it's just like. I mean, I guess by the time this episode comes out, I will hopefully know if I'm racing or not. But as of right now, I'm going to do the pre-race workout tomorrow and then see how I feel. So We can do a podcast release, sponsorship announcement, and race, race announcement, announcement all at the same time. Mm, let's make it happen. Look how efficient it is. A social it's media blast. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to blast them. But yeah, I'm just... <sighs> I mean, I obviously don't want to get injured, so yeah. just trying to be smart no. with it. But I do, really, with the I do really want to race. But. Keep those adductors happy. And you've looked great, you know. Oh, I've man. also been beside Thanks, you. Man. But uh, <laughs> not to, I guess, it, I hope this doesn't pour salt on the wound, but uh, I mean, fitness doesn't go away. So whatever happens with this, the fitness is there. But uh, yeah, you've looked, I mean, mm. sneaky smooth, especially that, that one rep we did indoors or that one workout indoors. Mm where I effectively led as few reps as I possibly could. Yeah. I had a good view from Tactical. behind you guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There has been yeah. a, just an absolute squad for We've this had a good team crew. getting ready. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been very mm. international. I feel yeah. like I'm running the 10K as well. <laughs> I've been working out with you guys part for of the, most of the week. Yeah. Part of the preview is the, the OEC and OEC, what are we, like OEC Extended. Extended yeah. family of OAC. <laughs> Extended universe, like the there's DCEU. Uh, <laughs> yeah, OACEU. There's lots of cameos right now in training. We have uh, our our Japanese 
our man Keita. Keita. The 20, what is he, 21 years He's old? He's like 14 20? or something. I don't know. The yeah. Japanese fan base has been loving my Instagram <laughs> because <laughs> they keep seeing in it. Yeah, yeah. Keita photos. Uh, he's been crushing it very fit. His PB, I think, is around 27.30. But <laughs> I think it's, yeah, yeah 27, 20 That's something. That's crazy for a 14 year old. For his... <laughs> in his uh, Ekaden he split equivalent to like a sub 60 half marathon so mm. this is kind of like his, uh, his wheelhouse I think this 10k even though he apparently is a 1500 meter runner <laughs> he, he was pitched to us as a 1500 meter runner he hasn't well, he was doing, one 1500 he was yet. doing 26s in, with me like in that session where you guys are doing the we did the miles and then the 200s yeah. the yeah. 200s and the miles yeah we're running like 26 25 and he was just like cruising with me. It's like shirt off. And I was like, yeah, let's take our shirt yeah. off. Took our shirt off for the last set. Did him. And then we're back to threshold. I'm like, like in my brain while I was just trying to ignore the threshold. I'm like, this dude's probably running a 10K. He's running like 25 seconds with me. You can do it all. You can it was, do it all. Uh, the little mix up we had the day was pretty funny. Uh, 600? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> Kate is, you know, he's great with, uh, like he usually asks about the reps ahead of time. But there was some miscommunication. So uh, we got we were supposed to go out in sixty four, and he, he, was, he was we were probably running what seventies. He probably thought <laughs> we were running two fifty five. So for about a hundred meters, it was noticeably slow. And he like turned around and looked at me. I was like sixty four. He's like sixty <laughs> four. Oh god! Yeah, he took <laughs> off. He yeah. took off. <laughs> so we probably came through in like thirty five. Then I don't know, maybe sixty two or something. Yeah, but, we we're not that far off the split in the end. So <laughs> no. Yeah, we were bang on. <laughs> he's he's better. That's yeah, so honestly good. like that's probably a good way to run some six hundred reps. It was good. <laughs> got the heart. It made all the rest of the reps feel better. It definitely did. But yeah, good way to do it. Yeah, he's he's a stud, and he's got some rivalries in there. A, a few yeah. Japanese guys. Yeah, it's a good a Japanese. Few. There's like coming nine out. or something. I think the current Japanese record holder is in the field as well, which I think is I think the record is maybe twenty seven oh nine yeah. something in that ballpark. So. Yeah, he'll have some... Uh, it's probably just all the same university guys that he always races mm. as well. Yeah. So that'll be awesome. We have Jonas is running. Reese Peace is running, Jonas. Yeah. Swiss Maestro. Yeah, he ran... Last year, he ran really well in the 27 20s, right? Yeah. I think like 23. 27, yeah. 23 yeah. or something. He was one of the top guys after uh, Joe and Woody just Woody. went. Yeah. So he'll be off. trying to run even quicker than that this year. Go for that standard. Um, is that it from us? Yeah. And then obviously Joe. And then maybe Ollie. Maybe yeah, Ollie. no, I, I'm yeah, up I've always been yeah. training with them. I've been training with the 10K guys. My lactate is a 0 0.1. So <laughs> let's just life. say things are going to be interesting in the next few weeks. No, I'm not racing it. But I am very excited to watch this race because it is fun to see you boys crush it, particularly these type of workouts. Like it's just, it's a cool, and it's a cool event because I think you don't get around many 10Ks, you know? Mm -hmm. So and everybody takes control of that opportunity it's not like a, an 800 or 1500 we can run like 14 of them in a year this is like probably like one of few so that's the other thing that's like it's just so if you want to run the 10k yeah you got to be ready to go because if you didn't times. race this 10k then maybe you would race the night of 10ks in um which okay. is in like a month from now or maybe a bit over a month i don't think it's actually that far away yeah the on track nights yeah and or it, the ethiopian trials those are your those are your three explore. choices yeah. or oh is that a pick Yes, but, but ZFX already happened. Already so. happened. Yeah. <laughs> Missed that one. They have a uh, they have that crazy fast um, 10k on the roads in Germany. That like big event. It's quite a few fast road is that 10ks. The, yeah, is that like the Adidas one? Yeah, mm. and they go crazy there. Yeah, they do. Twenty six forties. Really, twenty six forties. You can do yeah. that as well. Yeah, you could do that. That's how some people will probably qualify. If if you feel like the road is an easier place to break twenty seven. Then that's your, well, that's sure, your place. Surely to go. it would be with the shoes. Yeah, do you do that's a that's actually like a legitimate question yeah. these days. I don't think so. You don't My think so with the shoes? No, I don't. I, I mean I just think it's like to me, I love training in super shoes all the time, but once I get under, you know, sixty four seconds, sixty five seconds, it's like it feels better to be in spikes. Mm. But I'm also pretty slow twitch. So um hey, I've run behind you, you got a quick twitch. No, yeah, but so. you got a quick finish. Uh. And sometimes, you know, if, if when when needed. So when with, you with, with Elba George. So yeah, George and I were laughing after that BU race because we were just playing a game of chicken for the last yeah. three hundred. <laughs> and then I got I got out kicked by George, which happens. You know, a story as old as time. <laughs> it's a support group if you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some other good late ads. Well, I don't know if these are even late ads, but interesting, notable runners. You do have. Woody, I believe. I think Louis G. I just saw that it's that little story as well that said I feel like Abdi and Abdi and Woody were always in, and then they just sneaked in Luis on the end of that. Luis, yeah, yeah. he's just the last guy on the list right now. I'm so. surprised because last year it didn't look enjoyable for him. No, but, <laughs> but you know he's got him. a fat, you got a fat stack when he breaks a quarter mile on record. So true, mm. probably. 
Uh, the, and then first well, race back from Luis from injury in the fall. Mm. Oh, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, on, Andreas Amgren. Um, yeah, I'm quite Andreas excited to see coming off an amazing half marathon and yeah. just fifty nine twenty or something well. ridiculous. Yeah, Euro two. Well. So that'll be very good from the European side of things. Not sure who else is there from Europe. Any I know other big names. I know Brian Faye's in there. Yeah, uh, Irish and uh, is Mike Floppin there? Couldn't tell you. Mike Floppin. I feel like Couldn't he would be, but pause. I don't know. Has he ever run a ten k? I honestly don't know. Sure but he, he didn't. He didn't. He like was just off the five mm-hmm. indoors, so I wouldn't be surprised if didn't he just run a road ten or something? Yeah, he did. He did actually a pretty good road ten. So yeah, maybe not. Though I mean, some really interesting people in the field of the college kids because I believe Nico isn't Nico racing. Sneak. There was a yeah, well, there was a preview of it. The interview like. with Smith at least said to TBD. Oh, okay, so I we'll think just see. depending how the week went. I know um, he said if it was two weeks away, be perfect. One week they were going to wait and see. It's a tough turnaround, just emotionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that, it's like the perfect. It's the perfect thing for Mike Smith. It's the best chance to get Nico. that collegiate record, it's which the, is it's now the perfect thing. Like a ten k, I could not think of anything better for Mike or Michael. To stand at the end of, of the track and just look at Nico and tell him those that magic phrase. Go to sleep, Go baby. To sleep. <laughs> Go to that's sleep. A, that's a perfect race for it. Like, it is. why is Michael? Lots why would Michael waste his time not putting that athlete in there so it's he can no say brainer. that? It's Otherwise, no like you know, his whole mantra just goes down the drain. <laughs> so I'm expecting him to be there with Nico, yelling, "Go to sleep." Can't wait to see it. I yeah. wonder if he'll be there anyway for the rest of those guys. I'm sure it's he's not at a lot of races. He does have like half his collective racing as well, the Mike yeah. Smith collective. He I does. saw um, Hubtum, Hubtum Samuel oh, yeah. is racing really? from New Mexico. New Mexico. So, I mean, he looked decent. He looked pretty good indoors. I think he ran the, 10K or I'm pretty sure he ran the 10K in Eugene really? for yeah. Eritrea, I think. Oh, yeah. Fred Curley mm. also texted me. He's running the 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fred's in? Yeah, Fred's in. <laughs> is your, is, are, you, are you having Donovan run it or no? Nah? Uh, Donovan's going to be fi- he's gonna a fishing weekend in Florida. Mm. Yeah, that, he's not around. But he, he will be running the... Um, the cross country championships in Spain in a couple of weeks. I just wanted to get some threshold in there. Why, why he, run the standard when you uh, rack up the cross country points? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, he's going, going for he's the, get, one of those. He's going to get one of those spots picks. in the 10K, my Donovan Blazer. Yeah. So, so is I he think re- he's more of a 10K runner than 800. He's not very good at the 800. He's going to be a late entry for Ward Cross. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be racing uh, Stefan Hassan. <laughs> Stefan? <laughs> uh, Did you say Stefan or Stefan? Stefan. Stefan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I don't know who that is, but that'd be cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's Stefan's alter ego. <laughs> is that Went the team? from road to cross? Just depends. Yeah, well, that's the men's field. I mean, t- I mean, actually, it's not the men's field. There's a lot of other really good. P- is is Wildershield in it? There are some. Def- there must some. be some easy guys. Yeah, I, I think he. I don't know. Why are we speculating? I go, mean, go, go look, look it up. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I, I imagine every person in that field is pretty fucking good. So it's, it's yeah, going to be an amazing race. PBs. It'd be so much smarter for everyone to just look it up themselves. Thirty-five <laughs> man field though. So mm. I like that for a ten k. It's like you got some friends out there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> don't, you don't want to be lonely for 25 laps. Yeah. <laughs> I was last time I ran a 10K. I don't have good, well, I've run two 10Ks in my life. One of them was conference, big 10s, my final year. And that one was like, I don't even know like if you'd count that because I think that was like a bit of a jog fest. Like, we, I don't know if we broke 15. You, you, first were you wearing flats for that? I did. Wear yeah, flats. yeah, yeah you, you, I kicked <laughs> uh, the Ben Beach, the Beach kicked down. Yeah. yeah, that was actually scary because I was wearing flats and I think I was wearing the ones that have. Um, I don't even know if they had laces. I think they had like the the zip oh the zip up thing. <laughs> yeah. I think and they, they're pretty like compared to today's standards, pretty bad flats. Yeah, and uh, like Ben Veach has a really good kick. He does yes. actually. Yeah. 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 Then, <laughs> you did still win nice. that though, and I remember like it was a bit of a social meet. Like it definitely like people were like, oh, Morgan McDonald kicks down the whole field at Big Tens with flats on. Yeah, and everyone <laughs> zooms in. They're like, I'm pretty sure he's wearing flats in this race. <laughs> it was fun though, but then the other one was <laughs> not so fun because I raced. I think it was this race or a different sound running 10k uh, in 2021, and I went out in like I didn't even go out. I mean, that's a completely different 10k world when the standards 27 28 like you just mm-hmm. think about everything so differently i went out probably on standard or like slightly slower and then i just died and like i was, it was just one of those races where i just had a lot of people passing me like in the last couple of k's not a good feeling mm. and i was just like i wasn't jogging it in i did have a flight to europe the next day and i was racing a 5k like one week later so mm. i was 
kind of chilling when I knew I wasn't going to get a standard, but dude, it was just brutal. Just trying to like get locked in on that pace. I was, I was very impressed at how everyone else around me was able, especially like Joe, for example, that's the race that he got the standard in. I was like, wow, okay, this is not easy to do. It's not easy. Now the wheels falling off and anything over five Ks, <laughs> a horrible experience. It's a, long, it's a long way to go. I mean, in any race, it's never fun, but mm. when you see you have eight laps to go and you're hurting bad, yeah. Nothing quite like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quite like it. So we've talked a lot about the men's field. The women's field is not quite as deep. It's been interesting. I mean, there's there's a lot of amazing athletes still in the women's field. It's just been interesting from our little bubble hearing the chatter about it because for us, um, oh, we should also give a shout. Like, there's a, ama- I think the Puma guys are uh, supplying some like amazing paces for the men's race. Like the pacing is like pretty set. You got like you got it all down. Where the women's race, all of like what we've been hearing is we have Alicia going for it and then also Sugay, part of OAC Extended. <laughs> She's been training with o- us. OAC EU. <laughs> yeah. And they're both trying to like break 30. And it's like, how do, how do you find a pace yeah, right? yeah. to break 30? I don't know. What and you can't, get a, you can't get a bloke to do it too. It uh, has to be. Unfortunately not. Yeah. It has to be a female pacer, which is kind of like, if that rule didn't exist, it'd be a lot easier yeah. for them to get that pacing. But then... Every single women's event would just be so easy to run. Uh, the marathon? Silly. Well, exactly. They do allow. Yeah, they allow the marathon. So, fuck it, just or they just, Or they just have two records yeah, the, on the road. I, I they just have the marathon is weird. They just have women's only records and a pacemaker the whole way. I record. think at one point they respected the women's only record and then people ran so stupid fast <laughs> in the mix one that they're like, oh, fuck, like, that's just so impressive. Like We can't hate on that. Mm, yeah. So then everyone's like competing for that one. No now. one cares what the women's only record is, I feel yeah, like. I, I don't mean, know what it is. No idea. I mean. Maybe someone cares about it. I, I'll take that back. People definitely would. Comment, would comment if you... People just run so stupid it. fast in the mix. Compared to running 2.11 or whatever the hell they ran. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Is, That's nuts. It's just insane. Yeah. So, I mean, the women's race is going to be once again very hot. Last year, there were fireworks. Uh, mm. Made for some good stories. Particularly, um, <laughs> most, <laughs> most, <laughs> of, most of the fireworks social, were in the podcast. Particularly afterwards. on social media afterwards. <laughs> which is nice to see that. That's not intended. Have you ever heard... Eilish? Eilish McGuggins? Been those two words been put together? Eilish? Eilish oh. McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah, I know her. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Ben mustn't have been on the internet that week. So, what happened was we, uh, well, actually, it wasn't like we talked about it on the podcast after, but actually, it mostly unfolded oh, yeah. on Instagram. World Athletics did a post, I think it was a collab post with um, Eilish. It was, yep. Eilish McLaughlin. But I saw it as a World <laughs> Athletics post, and I was like kind of frustrated because. My teammate, Alicia, broke the American record and they didn't mention her at all. Yeah, the context is the post was like really like shouting out Eilish. Eilish, And, and yeah. she, she sat on Alicia f- until the last lap. Yeah. And so the post did For 9,600 so meters. Yeah, so that's why I said like in this comment, I said, oh, and congratulations to Alicia Monson, broke the US record and led for 9.6K of the race. <laughs> yeah. I said that. And I thought I was having a diss at World Athletics. And then... Eilish McGuckin's comments and just says says the guy that's uh, rode off Josh Kerr's coattails his entire career, and I was like, <laughs> oh shit, she came so back hard. pretty hard. And then I looked at the post, I really looked at the post, and it was a collab post. Oh. So that's why I was like, oh fuck, because I I was like, oh okay, understandable. Like I would not dare to comment that on her post. Yeah. I thought it was what I thought it was post, and I thought they weren't giving Alicia enough credit. So it kind of like I looked like a bit of a dick, and I just I just kind of just shut shut that thing down. I was like, oh, like just shouting out my teammate like congratulations whatever and then after that about 400 comments from all these other people and it, you know what that comment is still getting liked today <laughs> it's still gonna it's like i go 600 likes on it still <laughs> oh my god but people like just started picking sides so either on eyelash's side or my side just like fucking roasting me or roasting her so it was kind of like it's it was just so unnecessary <laughs> but it was great for the podcast disappointing news she's not running no Damn. No, what, what is she doing? Throwing lines from here. I've not seen her race for a little bit. Yeah. I know last she was on the she roads went, for quite a bit. In, she got injured, I think, last season. Yeah, we've got to get on the podcast. To <laughs> you, can you reach out to <laughs> no, <I'm not> reaching <laughs> out, <laughs> Please, Ronnie, just oh, extend no. the olive branch. Please come on our yeah, show. Yeah, that that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. So, yeah, most of our storyline, I, I mean, I know there's a lot, the women's race will be very exciting as well, but yeah. that's what's been occupying most of our our uh, airspace in regards it's to the funny, race. Funny, it's funny, funny pacer. Kind of funny pacer Dace is spending all, all <laughs> nights pacing around these little rooms going, we need a pacer, you got to call are, someone. What are we going to do? So, yeah, it should be... Uh, the price is probably <laughs> up to like 50K if you can... Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, pretty much, it's pretty much just like, we'll give you half of Nathan's coaching contract <laughs> if you can get a pacer for Alicia. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. George, you excited for a 10K race? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to... I was wondering if... <laughs> 
that was also going to come up. The fact that I made it quite public last year that this was the the worst race of the year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you just hide behind it. You didn't hide behind it. You you hide behind it. I remember. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'll see you afterwards. I mean, I think this year the men's race is shaping up to be more of a race, at least, just based on the the entries and the number of guys that you know should probably be there. Um, well, last year was electric in a different way. Last year was was the was the birth. Well, not the birth. It added a lot of fuel to the fire of the Woody. The Woody, the Woody Joe, Joe, yeah, yeah. beef. Because wasn't they like, did they bump each other at some the point? Woody or clipped Joe, and Joe, Woody was clipped Joe and Joe was pissed about it. Yeah, because <laughs> I think Joe was pissed because Woody wasn't taking any of the lead. Like they were trying to push for the pace. I remember that. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah, yeah good drama. So. Enjoy some drama. The tank game, so. I mean, I, I mean, the tank game hasn't, I don't, I wouldn't say it's grown on me in the last year. Okay. But I. Check in next week. Check in next week. <laughs> if it still should be in the, the George Beam is check in for the tank <laughs> oh, What would you man, rather watch other than the tank The Bachelor, probably. <laughs> Like on the track or anything? Just, just if the Bachelor was on at the same time as the 10K, what would you watch? Taking into account that like five or six year teammates are racing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, the ba- the Bachelor doesn't need to be watched live, so I could probably. I, I actually thought you were going to say you just put your laptop up and just watch it while you're watching Still the Bachelor. Screen. That's what I'd probably do. Could probably, could probably, you could probably ha- double bubble. Could probably it. handle a split, split screen. Yeah, you could double bubble it because like you don't even have to watch the last maybe couple of K unless something. Crazy happens earlier on in the race. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I don't know. Morgan jumps on Jonas's back and they do this piggyback method where they just run a lap each. That would be pretty crazy if mm. that did happen. Yeah. What have you I've seen you guys been practicing at training. <laughs> I just, thought you that's just Oh shit, I shouldn't have mentioned that. That's, <laughs> a, that's not that's secret much. tactics. That's a secret tactic. You might just need a pregame. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get drunker, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. you're, not, you're not drunk enough. That's just, how that's how people enjoy other sports, so yeah. just drink every time, sound running, makes a mistake on something. In the during the during the broadcast, wow! Somehow, Sound Running's name had to get dragged <laughs> in the mud. They've done nothing wrong. No, they haven't. But like you know, like people have their drinking game. So it's like, oh, when the, the announcer says yeah. "kick" or something like that, take a sip. Could do something like that, or like Sound Running mispronounces a name, take a sip, or like the pacing lights turn off and back on again, take oh, a sip. That would suck. Can yeah, no, that won't happen. I'm, I'm just I'm making turn up. off, and then they're just so far yeah. ahead. You're like. That's a, that'd be the worst. <laughs> that would suck. So that's our uh, nice, fun 10K talk. Very excited for that. Uh, should we just, I mean, we've already been talking for quite a bit, but why don't we do a little bit of wrap-up of some quick-fire NCAA mm. highlights? I feel like these are kind of, I mean, some amazing, amazing races, but kind of easy, simple to talk about because both Nico Young and Parker Valby were successful in their double and the 3K and 5K and both just looked pretty amazing mm. doing it. And... They really did. Yeah, <laughs> they looked dominated. Pretty unbeatable. Mm-hmm. I was my on the men's side. We were obviously cheering for uh, on NIL member Kai Robinson, but who really caught my eye was Parker Wolf. I believe his name is mm-hmm. from UNC. Who I, I've seen him like he's run great times, but I've never actually like watched him race before. And I was just especially like watching the five k first. I was impressed at the way he was able to take it and you know put a put up a really good fight. Really gutsy running. Yeah, he went with like maybe 800 to go. Yeah, it was just, a bit earlier. Just threw it down. And they actually ended up running, I think, was it, I think a meet record, which is 1325. Yeah, and that they was ran two meet records. I think Nico ran meet records in both of them and closed in sub four in both of them. Wow. Wow. Was that uh, Abdelhamid's meet it was. record? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Nico is already really good. And probably the best thing you could tell yourself before this meet is that, like, okay. Maybe the 400 to go, I can beat Nico. But now that he closes in Dude, 54, 54 point, I know. sub 13 guy that can close in 54 point is a big fucking problem. Yeah. It, he, and he, he broke 150 at conference a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Like, he split 149. Or no, he, did, he just ran 140. He was entered in the 800 and he ran 149. I'm pretty what sure. What do? Yeah. If he runs 149 and then 2659 within like a month, that'd be pretty sick range. Yeah, that's. <laughs> he, he needs to get. I he doesn't need to get one. I cannot get over. Cannot get over it. He does not have an NIL. His twin brothers have an NIL with uh what shoe company is it? On? I believe. Yeah, yeah it's on, on right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> What's that brand? Nico doesn't again? have an NIL. This dude does not have an NIL. Companies, what are you doing? Sponsor this man. Remember he had maybe that maybe really they thought it maybe they thought they were signing Nico. 
<laughs> they decide two. We got two Nikos now. We got two of them. That that has to be his choice. No, it, it definitely yeah. is. It definitely is. I'm just making fun of it, but like yeah. he's he's extremely valuable now. So like yeah. it's going to be interesting crazy. to see what happens. He's been valuable forward. the whole time. That's what I said. That's why <laughs> I'm like high school. I'm like yeah. why is he not going to Nadal? But it must be his decision because surely he's been offered. He had that something. early meat and cheese one. He also had a Spindrift one, which I was like, I remember talking we're about. Jealous. The pod. Oh, I was we were super about mad about that. I yeah. love Spindrift, and I like how the fuck did he get that nil? But well, good for him. Don't anyway. worry, I don't think it matters. I think he's going to sign a big enough contract yeah. pretty soon. That it, <laughs> he can yeah. buy as much no, spin no, and meat and cheese as he no wants. No NIL will, uh, will match up to what yeah. he's going to be doing. But yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing Seriously. racing. The The miles were also very exciting as per usual. Some some cool drama in the heats with people falling over, which yeah. was pretty crazy. And the then. final. Yeah, yeah. people were falling final. People fell in the final? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Gary Martin fell Gary. in the final. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. He hit the ground With like hard. 50 yeah. meters to go. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Gary. Which is, he's been fun to follow this year because he's really starting to like yeah. come into his own. Yeah, well, that was just a really impressive race. I mean, Luke Hauser, I think is that his name, Washington kid? Yeah. Went to the front with like 800 to go and just started winding it down. And everyone was just like chopping at the bit. It's crazy no one could get by him. No, but it was, was one. It was 153. Did you see they were nice. 153, 800. Just cut down? Right? Yeah. Really? He cut down really well. You and I were talking about this on the run the other day. Is what's impressive about Luke is it's really hard to detect any sort of like pace change. He looks yeah. like he's running. Never looks that fast. It never looked that fast. No, he's whole time. His last eight hundred was something like thirty, twenty eight, twenty seven, twenty six. It was yeah. like really nice mm -hmm. cut down. So. That's like from the Prefontaine movie. When he <laughs> races Frank Shorter. He does that. Yeah, yeah like Adam was like try like Spencer. He was just like trying to get around him. Well, he, he just like he couldn't, made like, but he was just speeding up the whole time. We hate to see the Wisconsin guys lose no, a national championship. Well, he, uh, he he made it. He looked like shout he out was. To Adam. Yeah, shout out to Adam for runner up. That's pretty unreal. It he made a move that I thought was like, oh, he's got it, and then he just couldn't go again. Mm. It just yeah, it just you you kind of yeah like what you guys said underestimate like how quick they go into the end because uh, the funniest thing I saw on social media and I have to bring it up the high school mile champion for some New Balance like the seventh national championship you have seven national championships in high school I don't know how the fuck you call you it national championship it's faster. Like seven of them he ran four minute flat and all these high school kids particularly like people that follow that are like it's faster than D1 now he's like this kid's like the oh, next generation yeah. and people are like you have no concept of what the middle distance running is at championship racing because if you did and you watched it you would have seen it was a more of a tactical affair than running a fast time you know what did you see they also had pace line yeah, yeah I saw that as well because I was <laughs> like oh but it's still Good. And then I, watched, I watched the video and he had pace lights. It is Crazy. actually shocking. Like it, it's pretty unbelievable how hard that concept is for someone that's not an yeah. endurance athlete mm -hmm. to understand. Because I used to get the same thing when I was in high school. Because I remember like Mac Fleet. I think it was Mac Fleet or Andrew Andrew Weeding. Shout out on. But uh, one of them won. It couldn't have been Mac Fleet because he's not old enough. It had to be Andrew. Weeding. Anyways, he, he won like three fifty. In mm. Eugene for the fifteen hundred, closed in probably what fifty USA's or NCAA's? NCAs. Mm. And I got DMs being like, because I ran like three forty eight or something. Everyone's like, dude, you could have won this. And it's just like, <laughs> I had a good one in my last year running New Zealand champs. I haven't run since. Was in twenty fifteen, right after I finished high school, and I won that. I won like junior fifteen hundred, and I ran three forty nine. <laughs> yeah. And Willis was back running nationals. He was he is bloody good at coming back for nationals. I have a lot of respect for that. And he won the senior title in 350 yeah <laughs> so like i ran like half a second faster or something it was like oh he ran faster than nicholas dude it's cr <laughs> it's so hard to understand dude the matt sensuitz when he won the olympics i remember kids like well high, like people that i knew uh in my life saying like you could have won the olympics i was like no yeah. that's not how it works like just because he ran slow time like you have to like and like i don't get it's pretty it funny, like, yeah. you just run you could just go run like that time you would have won i was like yeah but it's very hard to explain. You're 100 yeah. right. It's even harder when someone has that mindset to explain why you're traveling all the way to like the other side of the world to try to run a fast time. Yeah. To like, why don't you just go to the high why, school? Why don't you just do the high school track? <laughs> yeah, you right. Know? So funny. A good point. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, that. honestly, maybe I, maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah, really Saves a lot of money and <laughs> also just don't not have that to, like, good. Worry about the jet lag. Yeah. Um, and then on the women's side, Maya got it done. Congrats to her. Dude, yeah, Maya looked great. That's and a huge couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so very do you imagine awesome. running NCAA championships? Two days ago? Oh, <laughs> after a week after, yeah, being in Glasgow. That's crazy. Crazy. I feel like you could have done it. I don't think the 15s were Help that. that it was in Boston. Like, it would have been difficult to do if it wasn't in Boston. Just because mm. it's an easy place to get to? Well, she's she goes home. to Harvard. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. her conference meet was also in Boston. So yeah. that helped the situation, but mm. still a huge couple of weeks. <laughs> and they, the girls also, they broke meet records, mile 3K and 5K. Yeah. I mean, obviously two of them were Parker, but... 
Just, just no sweeping the sweeping the. How many miles records? a week do you reckon? Park Maybe eight cross training. Two, no. Because eight was sub two. I don't know. Actually. It might not have been a championship rec- rec- record. I, reckon I missed was. the eight. Yeah, because there's one fifty nine seven. That's quick. That is kind of that fast. is quick. Yeah. Maybe yeah. indoors. Whitaker. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, also on. oh yeah, two two on in mm. They and the Q's Q's getting his job done. We and now uh, well done. The uh, the the girl who sent that letter. Third in the mile. Two mm-hmm. New Zealand went one three in the mile. Yeah. Do you see the lap count and the medal table yeah. thing? Yeah, we were, I love that we're because we're above Australia. Is that what you wanted to point count? out? That New Zealand was above Australia. I appreciate oh, I that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. I mean, they're above. They're above the medal count. What was Canada in world champs as well? So like, we don't need to go through that again. <laughs> we had uh, one in both. What was the cricket again, George? Do you remember the cricket where we uh, fucked you guys up in the cricket? Do you remember that? Uh, it's not, it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, I bet it doesn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that one uh, four hundred guy? Is Canadian. Morale, yeah, you're yeah. right. Well He's done. been going crazy. Mm-hmm. The wood record, that wasn't It is the funny that Sidious right. Citrus did that uh, medal tally thing, thinking like, oh, the international military for NCAA champs. And then everyone's like, oh, America crushed it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no shit, it's in America. It's an American school system. I mean, America also they crushed do. worlds. Yeah, I know, but it's just funny that they put that up thinking that any other country had a chance <laughs> other nah, than the US. It's interesting to see how international it was because it was very international. It was, yeah, yeah. It was a long, li- like a long list of countries getting medals, like different yeah. countries, so that was yeah, cool. It was pretty see. cool. Throwback to the days where NCAA actually had... All Americans that were just Americans. Mm. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, makes so sense. Though. You're international. And top well, what 20, about what matter. about the streak of uh, non-Americans winning the NCAA cross? There was a streak for a while where an American didn't win till Mance, right? Yeah, Galen to Connor Mance. It Connor was like, yeah, like must that. Be Ten years. It was quite a while. Yeah, that's cr- that's actually crazy. You want know a funny story? Uh, uh, Jacob Thompson came up to me after NCAA's in the 10K. He said, "Dude." You're the first American to win this in the past, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> the past, like, I don't know, since Galen Rupp. I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm just a white dude, dude. I'm, I'm Canadian. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Uh, Canadian, eh? Uh, yeah. I was like, that happens quite a bit, though. I mean, sometimes on the roads, two people get really? pumped. That Falmouth, a lot of people were like, wow, it's so cool to see, uh, like, an American win this year. You I'm could like, have been oh, like, oh, yeah, North American. Uh, yeah. yeah, North, North American. American. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm from North America. Yeah. So, well, I got one more story, actually, about that. Please. But, uh. Because Falmouth was dominant. So Stephen Sambu won Falmouth four years straight. And even before that, like Kenyan domination at Falmouth Road Race. So locals who don't understand distance running, you know, to them, they're, they just are always used to seeing Kenyans win the road race, not knowing, you know, the, the, the athletes super well and everything like that. But the first time someone uh, told, uh, Hannah's mom told her friend that uh, Hannah was dating the winner of the Falmouth Road Race. She's like, Hannah's dating a Kenyan? <laughs> 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 You're like, no, no, no. no it's just Ben. Yeah. yeah. And then you come to the door, it's like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's pretty Close. funny. You know, yeah. Guy. yeah. Oh, that is good. That yeah. is good. So that's our very quick NCAAs wrap up. Amazing. Amazing couple of days of track action as per usual. I think we have <sighs> to really quickly. I had a. Do you want to talk about NAU? Um, <laughs> we can do that. No, please, sorry. Oh, no. Well, were, were you going to like hype them up for getting fourth or like yeah. say they didn't? No, I was going to say congrats. But no, then that, I was that like, was pretty sweet. Yeah. Didn't we get fourth? I think we got fourth. Yeah. I think we tied Indoors? fourth. We tied fourth with Stanford. With Stanford. Mm. You guys were fourth too? Wait, oh, yeah. what, what year? 2019. Oh, yeah. when you guys were there. Yeah. We had a big uh-huh. big weight throw come through for six uh-huh. points. Oh, yeah, you need you need something. It was like distance like, and weight throw. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> actually mostly, I mean, Nico putting up 20 points. That's re- I guess that's how you put up 20 points that year too. That helps a lot. Yeah. Um, I have one bone to pick with NCAAs that I cannot stand and I think makes like ruins the watching experience in there's no 10k in indoor <laughs> <laughs> in the 200 and the 400 uh, the they the gotta hits. get rid of those fucking sections yeah. I don't wanna watch it if you don't know who wins at the um, end of the race just make a six person final it's not that different like Imagine they did that world champs and the winner of the race was like, ah, we're just going to, I don't know if I'm world champ, but we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Yeah. It, it's terrible for the fans, like for the viewers. And it's not that different having six people compared to eight. They must just fill the lanes. for uh, all American reasons, no? Mm. I imagine so. I imagine it's an all American thing. It's but kind of annoying. Like the first team, Because it does team, take away American from it stuff. for sure. But do they, they don't, do they have the heats even or do they have like the slow one and the fast one? They must have them even, I'm I, guessing. I thought it was slower in a I thought it was one. seated. Oh, is it really? Oh. Yeah. Because the 4x4, I think, is seated. Because yeah. that makes, m- the 4x4 makes more sense. But um, but in the 200 and the 400, the like 
top three were all came from different heats. Like it would be like the first place came from the first heat and then that the next weird. two people that heat and then fourth was the other heat. Mm. That's a good bone to pick. It's I'm with shit. you. I, I think fear race is better. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Better really. to know who wins as soon as you cross the line. Yeah, like and then it's boring because that they're not like they're not really celebrating when any sub lays. Like yeah, like guys, oh, just a time trial and let's see what the other guy. Ran. Oh yeah, we know how Jordy feels about time we do. Trials. Yeah, we, we do. do indeed. We do <laughs> love a good time trial. So if you guys want to change that for next year, that'd be great. <laughs> please, please. But yeah, I think we have to check in with our friends Kermit the Josh. Jakob, Jingy, Jingy, and uh, I mean, at this point, it does feel like it's off a reality TV show. You like know, it, def- it definitely feels like this is like a reality TV. I experience. almost want to say like this is the last time we ever talk about them again because I, I don't know if like I'm like 95 percent sure like they've made an agreement to like I agree talk <laughs> I agree because think about how much they're dominating the news cycle. They're like, all right, let's just like say something inflammatory like once a week to a news article, <laughs> and then everyone should be talking about us constantly. Like because previously. To get that attention, you would have had to have a really good race, and now mm. they don't have to race, and they just talk, and it's just amazing. Mm. So I think they have some. It's an, it must agreement. be like an unspoken agreement. Technically, they just, technically they just Josh know. did win worlds. Technically, he did win worlds, but I do agree with that. I I think it's funny because, um, particularly like oh, the the quote from Jinky was Yaku's just, comments are just so just out of pocket. So out of pocket. <laughs> you just like, don't the comment it. from Jinky is like, oh. The reason why Josh like stopped giving him this attention, like the he reason said, he said, like people like Josh crave this attention. Crave, crave this attention. The, the Norwegian like translator, he's in on it too. Yeah, <laughs> must be. That guy's definitely Speaking in on it because he because he said he said it this about Josh. He's like, oh, he's literally looking for something that he doesn't have in himself. Or so, it was like so, I don't think I've translated that correctly, but some version of that. It's very and personal. I'm, very personal thing to say about somebody that you only know like competing. Yeah, you don't really know that. You don't really know Josh personally. Unless they like have some sort of FaceTime chat every week to divulge these plans. To plan it all out. But it's kind of crazy. And then it just keeps going back and forth. Well, Jakob also had some interesting comments about doping, which I think maybe we save for another time. I knew there was something. Like, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's that was right. like That was like pretty interesting. But then, yeah. yeah so today, what was the update? It was uh, on Citrus Mag or wherever they announced the some of the field for the Bauman Mile Bauman, at yeah. Pre-Classic. And they announced it just through the lens of essentially... Josh Kerr and Yakim's beef. And then they also added Yared in there as well. It's just like a, <laughs> they threw him on the back page. Yeah, he's just like watching them and he's like, yeah, I ran 343 here last year. But you know, you know when you go cool. to the movies and it's like Tom Hanks and like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like fucking, I don't know, Tom Hanks, Margot Robbie <laughs> featuring Will Smith. Yeah. Like literally Yared is the Will Smith. Like even though he ran 343 last year and almost beat Yakim, he's just a fucking side note because of this beef. It's and then, uh, really funny. Kerr had a game. I think they should have saved Yared's announcement. Yeah, they should have just not put Yared <laughs> Should have been there. separate. Yeah, it was kind of weird how it was done. But then Kerr had a good Instagram where he said, time to get back to what I'm best at the world at. And I said that terribly. That didn't make sense. But you guys what know I'm what best I mean. in the world at, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So but it's a mile, it's not 15. It is a mile. So yeah, like, yeah. why the fuck would he say that? Because he didn't win the mile at the World Champs. He won 1,500. <laughs> okay, that's exactly. So the, like Yair was telling me about this and he's like, last time I checked, there's not a mile World Championship. <laughs> 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 oh, this, is where, this is where Yair should have commented that on his post. It would have been so good. <laughs> yeah, I think Yair should, Yair should try and get in on the beach. No, he wants to be, a, he wants to be <laughs> above it. That's his but he is above it right he, now. That's the thing. He is not, above yeah, it. Yeah, I shouldn't even say he wants to be. He's like, he is. That's his take on it. Mm. So he just finds it funny. I mean, it's to gonna be, be honest, a great press conference. Yeah, it's <laughs> going to be a fantastic press conference. And uh, I mean, the rest of the field hasn't been announced, but uh, it's it's a pretty good field, I imagine. So it'll be fun to see them all line up for that one. It's always a good race, Pre. Yeah. So just that's our weekly little check in with the boys. Um, and there'll be a film crew with him. Yeah, that's the one. other big announcement today. Do you want to mm. explain it? I, I read it about two seconds before sitting down for the podcast, but apparently Jingy. I said uh, Amazon is following Jingy and his brothers. Mm. I don't know where I don't know where his brothers are going. I assume they're just following Jingy around. <laughs> I want to see what Philip's up to. A new. Bingy? Yeah. I haven't heard much of Bingy recently. And you keeping up, keeping up with the Ingies. Keeping up with the Ingies. Ingy Blitzkrieg. So yeah. we'll see if we can get on that. Yeah, we should try and get like to. a couple of features. We should try take um, the position of like Will Will Buxton. Is that his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the he's like the he's the guy who his job on the Drive to Survive is like to explain everything that's happening <laughs> to like the fans. We could honestly take that job. 
<laughs> so we should just be like the commentators on every. On yeah, we should. We should DM Amazon. Let's, uh, let's try to get that Rob. But yeah, um, one thing we missed is Ollie has a nickname for Ben, which oh, I yeah. don't think you've said yet. I haven't <laughs> said Ben's nickname. Oh, I went through it with uh, Live manager reveal. Tom Live Wangatang. Reveal. Yeah, did, yeah did I, 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 I thought it was approval. yeah. Um, had to bounce it off the manager. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did have uh, Ben Only Flans. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, a Ben only flans, but like you're such a good bloke that I kind of was gonna do uh, Ben flag flaying stuff, which wasn't as good. What is it? Flan stuff. Yeah. As flag stuff, flan stuff. I like option one better. Yeah, Ben only flans. It just it was fun. I mean, me and Tom went through a few names. I think only flans is pretty good. Yeah, so we I did think that is flans. good. And like you like you're like a chef that makes flans. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> just because I have an only flans account. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But your your only flans account is just purely like really nice wholesome. Canadian, Canadian content. content. Someone, who, someone yeah. who doesn't understand the concept yeah. of only fans <laughs> yeah. just thinks it's like a nice like live yeah, chat. Exactly. But that- um, no, nah, I still come with the names. It's funny though because I notice when we have guests on, I don't use the name as much. But when we're referencing them, it's so much easier to use. Yeah, that seems but, fair. Um, but that's that's I've christened you with that name. You have my consent to use it. There we go. Like. I have consent for Ben's only fans. Yeah, that's totally. Gus fine will set me. up the account. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah. Uh, ben, is there? Anything else you would like to cover before you leave? One thing maybe is just like your breakdancing career, perhaps. Oh, oh yeah, Can you, yeah, and your breakdancing partners. <laughs> my breakdancing partners. So Morgan saw my breakdancing. Wow. Did he actually live? So can I just can I just get from my point of view first? I, yeah, go. I I'm embarrassed that you probably <laughs> will. Cause so picture this: you're in Latvia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. Already. I feel like everyone's seen this video too. <laughs> you're in the you're in the basement of a hotel. They're handing out. Uh, there's a situation where they're handing out free Prosecco, but water costs $10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People are getting very drunk. That's an easy decision to make. Uh, but pretty much, it was like, I was actually like a banger of a DJ down there. Playing yeah, like good. Just, just good tunes. And then you got a bunch of awkward kind of runners, just a little bit tipsy, get dancing. And then just like from time to time, these little dance circles will form. But then there was no one, there was no one that was able to step up and take control of this dance circle except for Ben flanagan and every time this happened three times yeah too many <laughs> three times i saw him walk into the middle pause look around make sure he had everyone's attention <laughs> build a little bit of tension and then just fucking whip out some great ba- break break dancing and like did were you doing the worm as well a the, lot of worms well like, here's the problem with doing this routine three times <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's because it's only one like i only have one routine yeah 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 and anybody who has ever been with me at a bar in which i've had more than one and a half beers to get me to a level that you that's know that's break dancing level right there break dancing level yeah. did you it. did you whip it out at your wedding Oh yeah, the wedding though. So so. Wait, we're we about the break dancing. That's what we're, we're going on about. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about the break dancing, George. Exactly. Making that clear. That's yeah. what exactly. I was talking about. Okay, I'm just making sure. So, it did happen at the wedding. So okay. So for context, I took break dancing. I have two aunts that owned dance studios growing up, and I have some cousins that are very very good dancers. I'm not one of them. I'm not a good dancer. And we talked about this on one of the runs. Is that the older you get? The bar is very, very low mm. to impress people with your dance moves. So I'm a terrible dancer, <laughs> but I have enough of a routine that mm. I can get the people going. Right. So I have one set routine, which means when you picture me doing this three times, the third time everyone's like, okay. Like, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I think we all <laughs> kind of know what we're getting into. <laughs> but it was probably about a month ago, maybe two months ago, where Hannah, I, I did the routine and Hannah was like, eh getting a little flat, you know? Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I was actually appalled. I you got to hit the studio. Yeah, what the fuck do you mean it's getting flat? Like, the worm isn't like- This is why you married me. Yeah. You married me for a running career. Yeah, exactly. So the wedding, like I put everything, like risked my whole season, everything I had into the worm. And it was like, I got a video of it. And it was pretty good. Because the video it. in Riga- that was ugly. This that, was, that was no <laughs> That was probably the third time, so yeah. you're probably a little tired. So, and Hobbs won, so I was like, it was classic. I was like, all right, whatever, I'll go have a beer. I had three beers. And then <laughs> you come downstairs, and the Proseccos are just being handed up by the glass, and then you lose count pretty fast. Yeah, I can imagine. So, anyways, um, if you ever want to go to a bar, see it live. I'll probably do it once. Yeah. Like three times was an anomaly. Make sure, make sure you're there for like probably the last race of the season, and you'll get the full show. Yeah, yeah. it Do doesn't. Yeah, what about the fun fact? You had a famous uh, pa- uh, breakdancing class. That's partner. right. I was in the same breakdancing class as Justin Bieber. There you go. All time fun fact. There you go. So That's a legendary yeah, fun that's fact. A, that's a pretty it's good crazy, fun right? that's, fact. That's top tier. How often did you dance with him? Uh, we were in the same, just breakdancing, because I took other 
dance classes as well, which yeah. I, I don't show that off quite as much. <laughs> but uh, he, so he's from Stratford. It's about 45 minutes from Kitchener. That's where I'm from. And he was like kind of like testing out studios. So he came in for a bit of a trial phase. And we didn't think anything of it. He was good and whatever. And he sang and did his thing. How old, how old are we talking? Mm, probably about like somewhere between like 10, 10, 11. So pretty young. And then when his song One Time came out, it's like yeah. OG. Um, tune that got him famous. They like went and like found the paperwork and like hung it up in the studio. It was like, a big thing. So that's pretty cool. Pretty nuts. That so cool. yeah, he doesn't text me back. <laughs> <laughs> but Keep trying. yeah, the the more embarrassing thing is he was actually a better hockey player than me. To, like I saw him at a hockey tournament. And I was like level four. He loves he hockey. I saw he, he was like hockey. he was on the ice with some NHL team recently. Yeah, he was at the All Star game. That was oh, is that Checks what that was? Out. Yeah, that yeah. was sick. But he's legit. He actually played pretty good hockey. Yeah, apparently um, he's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Damn. Yeah, I was... Just Canadian things. Yeah, crazy. That's so cool. The more you know. <laughs> well, Ben, That's thank a you. great way to close it out. Yeah. <laughs> no better. I think that's probably going to be like our top guest story like, <laughs> of all time. That's going to be very hard to top, but... I appreciate that. Ben, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been awesome sitting down once again, chatting with you, chopping it up. It's been amazing having you here for training. So very excited to see how this, uh, this weekend goes. For everyone listening, thank you so much for listening to another episode. I think 128 it is wow yeah big numbers big numbers but um yeah that's it from us and we look forward to seeing you all again next week bye bye 25 bye. laps coming soon Oof. hell yeah boys from coffee club